I received another great comment asking if I would be willing to cover some of the string functions in Alteryx. And two of them in particular are the pad and trim functions. So I thought this would be a great opportunity to start a new series that focuses just on string functions within Alteryx. So let's go ahead and go in and get started. I've already got my palette and my canvas set up here to be able to do this demo. So I'm not going to create the data from scratch uh, like I normally do. What I've got in this first data set is a, an example of how I'm going to use the trim function here. And in my sample string, this first column and, and basically first cell of data is a, a set of, of uh, words that says here's some sample text and then it's got a few dashes, three dashes at the beginning and three dashes at the end. And what I want to do is I want to remove those dashes uh, from from the text. Okay, so I've got that coming in and uh, I've, I haven't run this so we can run it just so we can see it inside the browse tool. Okay, there's also another column in there called character to trim and I'm going to talk about that in a minute. So let's go ahead and take a formula tool from uh, it's actually on the preparation palette, but I have favorited that tool. So let's grab it, drag it and drop it between the input tool and the browse tool. All right. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to go into the configuration area here and I'm just going to start typing out the word trim. And as I do that, it will sort of auto detect that I'm doing a trim function and it gives me three options. So there's a regular trim, which removes the characters I want to remove from both the beginning and the end of the uh, text of the string. There's trim left, which will remove it from the beginning of the string. And then there's trim right, which will remove it from the end of the string. So we're going to actually demo all three of these. Let's do trim to start with. So it takes two parameters. One is it needs to know the string we're trimming. And in this case, it's going to be sample string. And then it needs for Y to know what string uh, we're going to, to trim. What is the actual uh, character it's looking for? And in this case, uh, I'm looking for those dashes at, uh, at the beginning and the end, since this is the trim function. Now, it's going to trim from the beginning and the end as many characters as it finds until it doesn't find that character anymore. So on the left side, the beginning, it's going to trim until it encounters the capital H. And on the right side, it's going to trim until it encounters the period. OK, so that's the first one. Let's go ahead and give that a name. And I'm going to call this trimmed string. All right, then we're going to add another example. So let's go ahead and hit the plus here and start typing in the word trim. And we're going to choose trim left. OK, same string, sample string, and the Y this time is going to be the same as well. All right, so we get an example, a preview of what this is going to look like. OK, and then we'll do one more, which is to trim right. So we'll go ahead and say trimmed right is the name that I want to give this new column. And we'll type in the word trim and we'll choose right. The string we're going to be looking in is sample string and for the Y, we're again, going to be replacing the uh, dash, the hyphen. OK, so I've got all three of those uh, built out here and we already sort of get a preview of what's gonna, what it's going to look like. But let's go back and, and run it anyway. And of course, I got an error. So there's something wrong in here. And let's see what mistake I made. And this one, I told it that I wanted to add a new column, but I never named it trim left. And so it's giving me an error. So let's go ahead and replace that. Click run and we're ready to rock. So let's go and look at our browse tool and you'll see that the trimmed string took the dashes from both the beginning and the end. So that was the trim function. Trim left took the dashes from the beginning or removed them from the beginning and then trim right removed them just from the right side. OK, now we can do one other thing. We can make this data driven. Remember, I mentioned that there's a character to trim column in here. So if I go over and I change this, what is what is what it's looking for? Uh, I can add in the field character to trim and I could do that to all three of these pretty quickly. And now I sort of have a data div driven uh, trim uh, ability built into here where I'm no longer just trimming a hard coded character. But now when I run it, you'll see it still functions correctly, but it's basing the character it's looking for on on this field. This is incredibly useful. If I happen to have a data set or I have the the 
columns or fields broken out where one of them does have the character I'm looking for to trim on the beginning or the end, which sometimes is the case, then uh, I can feed that in uh, to the data and into that sample string, whatever it is, and, and get it to trim to trim off. This makes it a little bit more flexible in the way that you may need to trim uh, data and characters off of uh, individual pieces of text. Okay, so that's the trim function. Let's go ahead and do the, the pad function. All right, so again, I'm gonna, I have some sample text here. It's called sample string. Here's some sample text. But I'm also gonna do this with a number because there's, there's uh, usually some questions around how do you add uh, zeros on, like uh, leading zeros onto a number. And so we're gonna do that as well. So let's do the, the sample string with the padding first. And again, I'm gonna give myself a little bit more space. I'm actually gonna grab these two and bring them down here. And we'll go ahead and pull a formula tool in. All right, and we're going to enter uh, the words PAD, and you'll see that I can do pad left and I can do uh, pad right. And this is very similar to the trim function, except in sort of the opposite way. Uh, left is the beginning and right is the end, but instead of removing characters, I'm actually going to be adding characters. And I have to tell it the string that I'm going to be doing this to, how much of that particular, of a character I wanna add, and then which character I'm going to add. So in this case, uh, we're going to do pad left, so we're adding it to the beginning of the sample string. Then I have to tell it how 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 long or how many times are you going to do this, and I'm going to say um, I'm going to do this three. Now, I'm I'm intentionally making a mistake here because I'm doing it the way that everybody thinks it should work. <laughs> so remember, I said I'm going to add three characters to it because this is the way that I think it should work, and then I'm going to add uh, the uh, I'm going to add plus symbols to it. Okay. And um, you can see in the preview, this this really doesn't work, and I'm actually going to do the pad left real quick. So we'll do pad or pad right, excuse me. We'll do sample string, and then we'll say length of three, and the character is going to be uh, the plus symbol. Okay. And so when I look at the sample, it doesn't work. And let's rename these columns. I'm going to say uh, padded left, and I'm going to name this one uh, padded right. Okay, so think of my logic, right? I said I want to add three plus symbols to the beginning and the end. So let's go ahead and run that. And it runs, I don't get an error, but it doesn't do what I wanted it to do. And the, and the reason why that's happening is because the pad function isn't taking just the length of what you want to add. That's a little bit misleading. What it's doing is it says, how much larger do you want to make this string field? And then however much larger you make it than it currently is, that's what it's going to pad onto the end of it. So we need to know how long this uh, this field is in order to be able to, to pad it. And so we can, we can cheat around this a little bit by taking a, a select tool and just seeing how long that particular field is. It's, it's 24 characters long. There's another way that we could do it too if we use the length formula or length function inside the formula tool, we could get that as well. So now if I go back, and I'm gonna run it again just so it populates with data. If I go back and I know I want to add three, I wanna pad this with three additional plus symbols and the length is 24, then I'm going to make it, uh, or the length, yeah, length is 24. I'm going to make it 27, and there I finally get the three um, added to it, and I can do that to the bottom, right? And there I've got it working correctly. Now when I run it, you'll see that it's padded uh, the right way. Okay, that's a, a common mistake people make, and I knew it confused me when I first started doing it. So that's that's the uh, that's the the padding piece there. Now again, if you wanted to make this uh, a little bit more dynamic, we might say that we would use a length function. Okay, so there's length, and then the string is going to be the sample string. And then I might say, well, I want to add three to it. So let's do plus three. Okay, and I can copy that out of here and bring it down to the bottom, replace the hard-coded 27 and just do it like that. So what it's doing is it's getting the length of the string and then padding it by three. So then it really doesn't matter how long that string is at this point because it's dynamic. So if I go back to my original data set and I say, uh, here's, here's more text, and this one is not as long as the previous one, okay? And I go ahead and run it. I should still get three 
pluses added on because uh, it's just taking the length into consideration. It's a bit more dynamic. All right, that's the string piece. Let's do the last one. And the last one is numbers. So I said that I had uh, a number that, uh, that I wanted to pad, which is one, two, three, dot, four, five. So it's actually six position characters because the, the decimal place counts as one character. So when I go back to my formula here, I'm gonna go ahead and add a new one. And we're gonna call this um, leading uh, zeros. A leading zero number. And uh, we're gonna do the same thing I'm gonna pad. Uh, but this time I, I want to pad left because I want to pad the beginning of it. And um, we're looking to pad the, uh, the sample number that I have. And I mentioned that it's six uh, characters long right now. Uh, five plus the decimal point, and I want to make this nine. And then what I want to pad it with is uh, zeros. Now, something's not going to work here. It's telling me that this, this is not going to be able to pad it. When I go over it, it says... Um, that that first argument must be a string. And, and they're right, it's not a string. It, remember, it's a, it's a number, okay? So what I have to do is put another function in front of that leading zero. And uh, the other function I need is called to string. All right, and we can just remove the parameters it's looking for and just put the sample number in parentheses. Now at that point, it changes color it's lit up, it looks good, and the sample preview, the data preview, shows me that it's actually working correctly. Okay, now I can go ahead, click off, I don't get a warning, and run the workflow, and you'll see that now I have uh, the leading zeros placed in that string the way that I would, would want it to be. Now, caveat here is that is now a string, it's no longer a number, so this might be a little bit more useful if you're using it in a report or some sort of output where uh, the string is okay to have in, in, instead of the number. All right, so that's just two of the string functions that are in Alteryx. Coming up in a future video, I'm going to uh, review the get word function and, um, and the find function. So that's coming up next. As always, if you are not subscribed to this channel, please do so you'll get uh, notifications. Click the bell when, uh, when new videos come out. Thanks.